Mazuma TV back with some more boxing talk. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mazuma Nation. Shout out to Mazuma Mob. I'm back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? I hope everybody's having a blessed week. I hope everybody's having the most positive and productive day possible. Let's talk about Terrence Crawford, man, and what's realistically on the horizon for him. We could get into hypotheticals and all that. Uh, we could get into what we want as boxing fans, but in all honesty, it's very rare, very rare when boxer fans actually get what they want. Um, and if they do get it, it's usually further down the line. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, that's how the game goes. That's how the business works sometimes. Sometimes they want to let shit marinate. You know what I mean? Um, thankfully, we was able to get Spence and Crawford at a, a good time. You know what I'm saying? So what's next for Terrence Crawford after this dominant ninth round TKO victory over Earl Spence? Um, I believe ESPN uh, ringside had put up like a post with possible opponents. Um, I believe they had Tim Zoo on there. Um, they had Jerron Ennis. They had Jermal, Jermel Charlo. I'm sorry, Jermel Charlo. And I'm, I, they probably had a few others. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken. That might have been all of them. I'm not sure. But regardless, um, it all depends on where Terrence Crawford goes from here. I thought that post-fight presser was uh, very telling exactly where his mind was you know what i'm saying because usually he doesn't like to talk about his next moves um he doesn't look through his opponents you know what i'm saying he likes to put he likes to stay in the moment and focus on who he has in front of him but after the victory he was saying how 47 was pretty hard to make he was having trouble making the way and that he was looking forward to moving up and fighting at 154 you know what i'm saying um i think the most realistic option is earl spence coming out and activating his rematch clause unfortunately you know what i'm saying um me and i'm saying unfortunately because after that kind of uh the way that he dominated um he showed that he was levels apart in my opinion you know what i'm saying so i don't know if there's something that can be done different in the rematch you know what i'm saying i i, I thought that the accuracy and the timing of terrence crawford was just level like worlds apart from earl you know what I mean? I don't know if Earl could do something in one training camp that'll be able to neutralize that from Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? Possibly the moving up in weight will make him a rejuvenated fighter. But in all honesty, I think it's going to take more than, uh, you know, putting on a couple pounds. You know what I mean? Hydrating a little better to beat somebody on the level of Terrence Crawford. That's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? So um, most likely Earl's stubbornness and his competitiveness you know what I mean? And, and I salute it. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody has that kind of grit and determination that Earl has. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes being stubborn could be a good quality depending on the situation. You know what I mean? So salute to the man. But I, I honestly think that they'll be rematching at the end of the year at 154 pounds. You know what I'm saying? And most likely er, uh, Terrence Crawford will vacate the belt at 147. And then it'll just be people scrambling for trying to grab the world titles. You know what I mean? Um... However, if Earl does not activate his rematch clause and he decides that he needs to take some time or he needs a tune-up or he just needs to um, look in a different direction, which I doubt, but if that's the situation, then I think the next best option, if he goes to 154, uh, he's been claiming he's going to, I would love to see him and Jermel Charlo fight early 2024. You know what I'm saying? First quarter of 2024, I would love to see that fight. Especially if he comes out victorious against Canelo. If Jermel Charlo beats Canelo um, in September, man, his momentum is going to be at an all-time high. And based off of Terrence Crawford's dominant performance over Earl Spence, his momentum is at an all-time high. So when they clash, that'll be a hell of a fucking fight, bro. I would love to see that fight. And that puts Crawford in position where he become not one, not two, but three-time undisputed world champion in three different divisions and then four weight classes in total? Man, that's all-time great status. And I honestly feel that him being two-time undisputed uh, world champ is, is an amazing accolade, an all-time great feature in itself. But if he was able to do three, man, you, you talking like he's one of the greatest ever. You know what I mean? Um, that's just my personal opinion. You know what I mean? But if he stays at 147, I would love to see him take on the young line and Jerron Boots Ennis. Um, he shows like like he he shows signs of invincibility as well. You know what I'm saying? Like how the way he looked against Romain Vila, it might have been a style matchup that made him look good. 
Same thing could be said for Terrence Crawford. Because I've seen Crawford in more difficult fights than Earl Spence. So maybe it was just a style matchup that Crawford was able to take advantage of. But uh, Jerron Ennis shows very little uh, flaws in his game. You know what I mean? And I think nobody will be able to expose them unless you're on the level of a Terrence Crawford. So um, I think that fight, Terrence Crawford and Jerron Ennis, will be an amazing fight. I'll definitely be tuned in for that. Um but if he goes to 154, I don't see why I don't I don't see how Tim Zoo is eligible for any type of shot at Terrence Crawford. I just don't see that happening. Uh, I don't think he deserves it. I barely, in all honesty, if we keeping it real, I don't think he's really worthy of a Jermel Charlo fight because his best wins to date are a washed up Tony Harrison, in my opinion, and Terrell Goucher, who never really done anything at 154. He wasn't a world champion from as far as I know. He's not a former world champion as far as I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, he hasn't fought a top gun, Tim Zhu. He hasn't fought even an Erickson Lubin. He hasn't fought a Brian Mendoza. He hasn't fought a Jesus Ramos. What makes him so qualified to get a shot at Jermel when I think there's other fighters in the division who's more deserving than him? You know what I mean? I honestly thought at one point, before the loss, I thought Sebastian Fundora was more worthy of a fight against Jermel than um, Tim Zhu. But that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? Maybe they're just trying to push this guy because he's the son of a legend at Costa Zhu. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But I'm just giving you my honest opinion. So, um, yeah, man, that's my take on the situation. Um, if he stays at 147 and defends all four of his belts, I would love to see him go against Jerron Ennis. Um... I really don't want to see a Keith Thurman. He's been on the shelf too long. And if he beats Keith, they'll just claim that Keith is washed and he's been inactive. So um, I feel like they also have an excuse if he were to beat somebody like Jerron and it's like, oh, you beat an inexperienced guy. He was too young. He wasn't ready. It's going to be excuses regardless. But I think that it'll be more impressive if he defeats a Jerron Ennis, if he shows a way to, to uh, beat a Jerron Ennis, who's looking like he's unstoppable right now, in my opinion. So... Um, if he stays on 147, Jerron Ennis, if he goes up to 154, fight the undisputed world champ. You know what I'm saying? Because even if he loses to Canelo, he'll still have all four of the belts at 54. So that'll still be a great fight. You know what I'm saying? So um, it is what it is. That's my take on the situation. Who do y'all think Terrence Crawford should fight next? You know what I'm saying? If the Earl Spence rematch does not happen, y'all let me know in the comment section below. This is Mizuma TV. If y'all been tuned in this long, I, I appreciate you guys. Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to Mizuma Mob. I'm out of here.